In this video, we'll talk about traveling hydraulic jumps. Just to make it self-contained, I'll begin by reviewing what we've already figured out about stationary hydraulic jumps in the context of hydrostatic flow over an obstacle. So, we have studied how uh, a fruit number less than one, which means a fairly gentle current, can flow over an obstacle and speed up and become shallower and the fruit number then becomes greater than one and uh, as the flow passes over the obstacle the fruit number somewhere is equal to one and this exerts a hydraulic control on the velocity of the flow so now we have this fast shallow flow which is basically unstable and at some point before long it's going to come bursting up and form a hydraulic jump where the flow is slower but deeper and turbulent Okay, so this is the hydraulic jump here. Um, we'll introduce some new nomenclature. Here we're going to define z equals zero to be the depth of the water just upstream of the hydraulic jump. And then the surface is at z equals eta, as usual, and the bottom is at z equals minus h. So downstream of the hydraulic jump, the surface is at z equals eta. Okay, and then we're going to uh, define, let's see, the, the depth of the flow upstream of the jump is uppercase H, as we've done before. The depth of the flow downstream the of the jump is going to be defined as RH, where R is what you might think of as a deepening factor. Now, upstream of the jump, the velocity has, uh, or the current has a velocity U sub U, U upstream. And then downstream of the jump, the current velocity is u sub d for u downstream. And mass continuity requires that this be equal to u upstream over r, so that the velocity times the depth is always the same. Okay, so we have used the, uh, the principles of momentum conservation and mass conservation, as they're written down here du by dt plus the advector term u du by dx is equal to minus g times the surface slope d eta by dx. And then d eta by dt is minus little qx. This is a new bit of notation, but it's, it's a trivial change. Uh, small lowercase q is just the, uh, the volume flux, u times depth divided by the width. So volume flux per unit width is little q, and d eta by dt is minus the x derivative of that. Now because the flow is steady, nothing's changing in time, momentum conservation just becomes u u x equals minus g eta x, and mass conservation just becomes q equals constant. So u times h plus eta is some constant. And by combining those two conservation statements in this flow geometry, we arrived at the fact that this quantity is constant as we cross the hydraulic jump. So h plus eta times u squared plus half of the gravitational constant times h plus eta squared has to be the same upstream of the jump and downstream of the jump. Okay, and then using that fact we were able to do a little bit of algebra and find these expressions for the upstream velocity and the downstream velocity in terms of gravity and the upstream depth h and this deepening factor r. So here's upstream velocity, here's downstream velocity. We can also do this in terms of the Froude number which doesn't involve h, the upstream depth, so upstream Froude number squared is just r times r plus 1 divided by 2, and if you analyze this function a little bit, you find that it's greater than 1 if r is greater than 1, and less than 1 if r is less than 1. So in the situation we have sketched here, where the water gets deeper as it passes the hydraulic jump, then that's the case where r is greater than 1, and that corresponds to an upstream Froude number that's greater than 1. We can turn this relationship around and use it to predict r if we know the upstream fruit number. That's just a solution of a quadratic equation, and, and that's the expression you get right there. 
We can also find an expression for the downstream fruit number. It's r plus 1 over r squared. And if you analyze that function, you find the reverse of the upstream fruit number. The downstream fruit number is less than 1 if r is greater than 1, and greater than 1 if r is less than 1. So, upstream of the hydraulic jump, fruit number will be greater than 1. Downstream, fruit number will be less than 1. Okay, so that was a stationary hydraulic jump. Now, how about a traveling hydraulic jump? And here's an example right here. This is a wave crashing on the beach. It's already broken, and so it's just a surge of water coming towards the beach. We can model this as a hydraulic jump that is traveling into stationary water. So imagine that the flow ahead of the hydraulic jump is stationary, and then the hydraulic jump is not stationary the way we've imagined it before, but it's actually moving. And to do that, all we have to do is, uh, is transform our reference frame. Now to begin with, um, just, just to make this easy, we're going to reverse the direction that we imagine our flow going in. This will just make it look like the picture here. Um, so we have a, a hydraulic jump, and then there's an upstream velocity, which is to the left, so it's negative, and a downstream velocity to the left, so it's negative. So the upstream velocity is minus the square root of gh rr plus 1 over 2, and the downstream velocity is that divided by r. Uh, so it's also negative, but it's smaller. Okay, so if we imagine that our jump is advancing into still water, like this, then all we have to do to make the required Galilean transform is subtract the upstream velocity from the entire flow, from all velocities. And that requires adding root gh rr plus 1 over 2 to all velocities. The result then is that the upstream velocity becomes zero. So we have the case of a hydraulic jump advancing into still water. And now there's a couple of velocities that we can figure out. One is the speed of the jump itself, uj, and then there's the speed of the run-up behind the jump, ur. Okay, the jump velocity, uj, is just 0 minus u sub u, or square root gh r, r plus 1 over 2. So that's the speed that a hydraulic jump will move into stationary flow. An interesting thing to notice about this speed is that it's greater than the linear long wave speed. And you remember that when, when you have small amplitude waves so that the equations can be linearized, then the fastest speed that a wave can go is the linear long wave speed, square root gh. But in this case, we have something greater than the square root of gh. And this is the phenomenon of nonlinear speed up when waves have finite amplitude rather than infinitesimal amplitude, they can go faster than small amplitude waves. So that's nonlinear speed up. We can also calculate the speed of the flow behind the hydraulic jump, and this is the run-up in terms of waves uh, impinging on a beach. The run-up velocity is just ud minus uu, or all of this, the square root gh r r plus 1 over 2 times 1 minus 1 over r. And you notice that this will always be less than the jump velocity. So the water behind the wave is moving, but it's not moving as fast as the wave front itself. This differentiates um, a hydraulic jump from a regular linear wave, because in linear waves no water actually moves uh, in the direction that the wave is going. The water just goes around in ellipses. But in this case, once the wave is broken, it's actually carrying water with it, moving at the run-up velocity, but the wave is traveling faster than the water behind it. Here's an example. Um, suppose h is 0 0.1 meters, so the water is 10 centimeters deep. This might be something that you would see on the Oregon coast uh, on a fairly gentle beach. Uh, and suppose that the wave is an additional 10 centimeters high, so the deepening ratio r is 2. 
In that case, you can figure out the velocity of the wave traveling through the water. Note that if it was just a, a linear long wave, then the velocity of the wave would be root gh, which is just one meter per second with these parameters. But in this case, um, the wave velocity is faster than that. It's 1.7 meters per second. And the run-up velocity, the velocity of the flow behind the wave, turns out to be just half of that, 0 0.85 meters per second. Now, a thing to be aware of is that we have made a Galilean transform here to represent a hydraulic jump moving into still water. But you could have a hydraulic jump moving into water traveling at any speed that you like just by adding or subtracting the appropriate velocity from the entire flow, both upstream and downstream of the jump, um, so that you get the velocity in the, in the reference frame that you want to be in. So that is uh, the theory of traveling hydraulic jumps.